And now Eliana can dance every day in the comfort of her own ballet studio themed room. You can learn more about Room for Joy and even volunteer with them by visiting roomforjoy.org. In Chandler, I'm Mike Larman, 12 News. State fair season is in full swing across the nation, but with that come a lot of safety concerns. I spoke with an independent inspector who travels from fair to fair, and he assures me at the Arizona State Fair, safety is not some funhouse illusion. Games, food, music, and rides. Each year, the Arizona State Fair throws together all the ingredients for entertainment day and night for more than three weeks in October. Every year we get from 1.4 million to 1.8 million yeah, people that come to the fair in those 18 days. For many state fair goers, one of the traditional mainstays remains questionable. I wouldn't really want to get on like in the first days or first week. I would wait it out, maybe like towards the end or like in the middle. But yeah, it is a concern, which is kind of why I don't like going on the rides. One person was killed and seven others injured on opening day at the Ohio State Fair in July when a section of a ride called the Fireball broke apart, throwing passengers up to 20 feet through the air. The ride manufacturer claimed the incident was caused by excessive corrosion after 18 years of use. Barry Scheibel is a third party inspector who was working the California State Fair during the Ohio accident. The minute we heard that something had happened to that ride, we went to the ride and shut it down immediately. He's now in Phoenix to run and oversee ride inspections at the Arizona State Fair. He calls this carnival the Disney on Wheels and explains why Arizonans can put their trust in these rides. We go by what the manufacturer tells us and industry standards and uh, we get to the events a week prior. We don't see the rides like you do at a theme park when it's already together. I get to hold parts in my hand and see it laying on the ground. So when you're done enjoying a deep fried treat or trying to win that prize in your favorite carnival game, go for a thrill ride. Barry says your safety is not at risk. It's just the way we are. We do it right or we don't do it at all. Now when you visit the fair here in Phoenix, you will notice a ride nearly identical to the one in Ohio. The difference, Scheibel says, is this one is brand new. In fact, the company that runs the Arizona State Fair won't allow their rides to get anywhere near 18 years old. In Phoenix, I'm Mike Larman, 12 News. Caught in the storm, a wet ride for thousands. Mother Nature unloading on the valley, rain, wind, and a whole lot more. Much of the damage and destruction up north, heavy winds taking down three power poles near Shea and 32nd Street. Electrical lines left dangling, thousands now in the dark. Check out Tony Jackson's backyard. Not surprising, his house doesn't have power. His wife just getting home. This giant tree, no longer vertical. A double dose of wind and rain taking it down. Just down the road, a Palo Verde splintered in half. Farther north, near Pinnacle Peak and Cave Creek, cars are forced to splash through flooded roads. Some traffic lights out, police called in, this storm packing a punch. Back up north, a problem of sorts. This lady stuck, not seeing the downed power lines. She'd make it out, but it will be a lot longer till the power in this area comes back on. At least once a year, every little girl it's pretty good. deserves to be pampered. It's all she's been talking about, like all she's been talking about. Eight-year-old Peyton Thomas getting the royal treatment, a Cinderella makeover for a princess who suffered a horrible spell. It's been a challenge, you know, just trying to do simple everyday things. Seven months ago, Peyton seriously injured in a car crash, now paralyzed from the chest down. She spent 100 days in the hospital. She celebrated her eighth birthday in the hospital. No hospital gown tonight. Peyton gets a blue dress and sparkling slippers. The entire family ready for a Halloween ball. It's awesome. So much more than we could have expected. Dad is Prince Charming, Mom the Fairy Godmother. There's a coachwoman, a mouse, and Peyton is Cinderella. Because she's my favorite princess. Ready for the ball, this princess needs a ride, and thanks to Magic Wheelchair, and has her own horse-drawn carriage. It's, it's unbelievable. I can't wait to see her inside of it. Decked out with lights and glitter, the detail is magical. 
and specially built to accommodate a little girl who looks more Happy Halloween. like a fairy princess. Happy Halloween, Peyton. It's the hardest day of the season for head coach Ryan Felker, and Mesa Community College isn't even on the field yet. We thought about pushing practice off and giving it a few days, but uh, Ben, ben will not go for that. Felker spending the day before practice meeting with his players, grieving over the death of assistant coach Ben McIver. There's so many kids that, that are, are torn up by, by what's happened. Phoenix police say MacGyver getting into a fight with another man outside Padre Murphy's sports bar near 43rd Avenue and Bell Road, at some point hitting his head on the ground, an injury which took his life. The meeting was more about, not about what happened to coach, not about football, just just healing as a family. He has, he has ex-players all over the country. Players like Kenneth Steele, who says he wouldn't have a football scholarship at Southeastern Louisiana, without Coach MacGyver. Like a father, like in a father situation, like he meant, he meant a lot to me, man. Like it just, it's just to get that opportunity coming out of high school, that, that just brought me to, you know what I'm saying, that built our relationship to a different type of part. Dozens of former players grieving on Twitter. New York Jets defensive end Claude Pallone, who played at MCC, also likening MacGyver to a father figure. To all of them, at least a second dad, but to, to most, their dad. I mean, and that's, getting up on time, making sure they set their alarm, make sure they're not starving. Coach MacGyver, who is also a phys ed teacher at Glendale High School, leaves behind a wife and three sons. Inside this Gilbert home on Jamaica near Milbrae, police say a mother of two young kids was murdered. Cherry Ponsati killed her husband, Mark, arrested, charged with second degree murder. Court documents paint a sordid tale of deception and cover-ups. Mark Ponsati telling investigators his wife slipped in the bathroom, hitting her head. Police say it was all staged, Sherry's friend telling us. Investigators convinced Mark brutally beat his wife, made it look like she fell, and called 911. Only Mark knows what really happened. Sherry can't tell us what happened, but the crime scene can talk. Blood on a prescription bottle in a separate room says something. So does an empty bottle of shampoo on its side. How did most of it end up on the floor? Combine all of that with allegations of a tumultuous marriage and previous threats to kill, it's why Mark Ponsati faced a judge. Ponsati said little court documents say much more about a man accused of beating his wife so hard she had rib and skull fractures, spine and brain bruising. Injuries police say didn't happen from a fall. Details her friends have seen. Why is the question we may never know. But police are convinced they know who. Our multimedia journalist, Mike Larman, capturing the exclusive video on the ground as a woman approached the dog on the playground at a church near 19th Avenue and Indian School. I was actually uh, working at home and I got a call. Well, I'm very happy. I have to thank the President uh, of the United States uh, for his pardon. A standoff and negotiations lasting more than six hours, ending in gunfire and one injured officer. Our crews just a few feet away. Oh. Woo, giddy up. So tell me about Corral West Adventures. We don't want to take anyone's guns. We don't want to infringe on their rights, but we want to feel safe in our schools. A dozen or so people are counter protesting as well, claiming the demonstration is an attack on the Second Amendment. Well, I'm out here to have dialogue to try to understand where they're coming from, where I'm coming from. This generation wants to take away our rights. And, you know, if you're going to say that guns kill, then, you know, cars kills too. But the students claim that's just not true. She was just such a sweet soul. Monica Jock, who works at the Grapevine Restaurant in Old Town Scottsdale, describing Paulette Lorwinski. The 70-year-old was homeless and would stay on Brown Street near the restaurant, oftentimes coming in for food and water. It felt very comfortable here. 
until the other night. That's when Randy Vogelzong says two armed men got into his home through an open garage door. He had been working on a car in the garage when he went inside to fix dinner. When he turned around, he came face to face with an armed man in his kitchen. They were just telling us to get into the bedroom and be quiet. In his bedroom, he found a second robber holding his fiance and one of his daughters at gunpoint. The Moon Valley football team starting off their Friday night football game with 33 seconds dedicated to number 33, Carlos Sanchez. While Sanchez, a beloved friend and teammate, is no longer here to take the field with them, they made sure the 16-year-old was there in spirit, serving as an honorary captain. Seeing that just gives me chills, just hearing about 